We had another live broadcast on the channel the other day where I interviewed Grandmaster Jonathan Tistel about his book, Improve Your Chess Now. I think it's a really important work, actually, and really valuable advice in there. Um, if you haven't got time to look at the full 60-minute interview, then what we've done is just select a few little clips for you. So we've got three clips from the interview. First clip is a discussion of um, Alexander Kotov's Think Like a Grandmaster, which is a very important book, actually, important theories, including uh, Kotov's theory of the tree of analysis and candidate moves. But uh, John feels this is a, a, quite an unnatural way of looking at a position, but we discuss that in the first clip. And at the end, there's a nice position for you to solve. Then the second clip, well, there's more discussion of, um, you know, the, the best way to think about a position. And this is focused on the game Boleslavsky against Fleur, which Kotov discussed in Think Like a Grandmaster, and we tackle it as well. And again, there's a position for you to look at and try and work out. And the third clip is where we discuss visualisation and blindfold play. This, of course, is an incredibly important skill when we're playing a game of chess, when we're calculating. I mean, it's, it's fundamental to playing a good game of chess. And that's something that's also discussed a lot in Jonathan's book, um, and at the end, there's an, a nice little position for you to look at as well. So, once again, I would warmly recommend this book, Improve Your Chess Now, by Jonathan Tisdall, and that's available from newinchess.com. I'll put the link below and just get it. It'll do your chess the power of good. I want to plunge right in with chapter one. The fabled tree of analysis. Mm. Okay, and, and it starts with this quote from Grandmaster Anatoly Lane. I don't think like a tree. Do you think like a tree? Okay, you're going to have to explain this one. Hi, good old Anatoly. I, I could write a whole series of books from random things he said to me, but that one really stuck in my mind. And mm. it's a reference to probably the most famous thing about Kotov's uh, Think Like a Grandmaster which he explained how a grandmaster supposedly thinks. Um, and of course, this is primarily aimed at very concrete situations where you're calculating basically tactical sequences or mm -hmm. attacking sequences. And um, he described the process as the tree of analysis. And he also had you know, sub growths, like he had um, coppices, did he? And he had bushes and all yeah, sorts of things, different yeah. <laughs> shrubbery. Yeah, shrubbery, lots of shrubbery, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so basically he would analyze uh, very comprehensively by good old fashioned human terms, which was, you know, very comprehensively still by, you know, human practical terms. And he would draw these little branches and trees. Mm. And Lane was, Lane was just pointing out not only the obvious, but it was quite heretical at the time because Kotov mm -hmm. had basically convinced everybody that he was he was right. And of course, there are always more than one way to approach a situation. But um, for some reason, people hadn't really thought to um, question that in any detail. And well, I, th I was... think I think Kotov's tree of analysis and, um, the, and this whole idea of candidate moves. Candidate moves is the other one, yeah. Yeah, were somehow or such a the neat, second ingredient, such a neat mm. theory. I think this is the point. This is very understandable, mm. and a very neat theory. And in some situations, I think absolutely applicable. Oh, sure, and extremely useful. Yeah, and yet in other situations, just <laughs> it doesn't work at all, and or at least, but that, that's yeah, not how yeah. we think. Yeah, but my thesis was, I mean, that Lane was right. In fact, it's extremely unnatural. Yeah. It's hugely unnatural. And what so what I wanted to do was to examine um, how we think naturally and um, and really work from there to, 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 be, to see how that might, in fact, not only be truer, but more efficient 
in, mm. in, in, in many situations. Yeah. But before we continue with this, I'm, I'm, let's look at this position. So this is actually from a different chapter. I'm jumping around now just, just to mm. completely confuse everybody. And this is from the chapter, which is um, The Art of Playing Bad Positions. Yeah, that's, I guess so, yeah. Black mm. to play. So I think we've already had a correct answer, actually. Perdoni Rosso... It's Black white to play, actually. Oh, no, it's, I beg your pardon. It's white to play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the question is, how do you play if you were playing white in this position? White to play. What would you do with white? Yes. Now that I see it, <laughs> that, that it's actually white to play, um, it's, it's a whole lot easier. Yeah, we've got some interesting comments here. Pedone Rosso says it works perfectly. The, the tree of analysis works perfectly for chess engines, though. So, yeah, but we're not we're not machines. I think that's the point. Yeah, that is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're looking for a white white play. What should white play in this position? Which I'm trying to wake everybody up here. White to play. Oh, everyone's being a bit slow now. White to play. What should you do here? We will come back to the tree of analysis. Wow, I can't believe it. We have, we have no suggestions at the moment. White to play. <laughs> normally, normally we get flooded. Come on, wake up, everybody. <laughs> I think I, I should put this in context. This position was, uh, Perdoni Rosso says, <laughs> Rook takes something. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing that can be. Afraid not. Kevin says, can I phone a friend? Pawn says, Rook F7, hail, Mar hail Mary. Hail Mary, I think he means. Yes, Rook F7 check is a sensible move. Yeah, there are probably more than one, but that's definitely the that's most sensible. Definitely the most sensible move. Um, instead, Rook A7 was played. So this is played by Donna. Um, why was this not the best idea from White? So now it's black to play. Black to play. Black to play. It's all gone very quiet again. Black to play. Come on, folks. Can't believe it. Everyone's sleepy today. Rook h1 now. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Pawn. That is a bit of a shocker. And King g3 with the unstoppable threat of rook e1 mate it doesn't feel natural to to select no candidate moves. no candidate moves or trees no in this kind of position basically no. you go the with sharp, your first yeah. instinct and run through and that. generally the most violent probably the most violent instinct as well yeah which i think also holds up i mean that's oh, i know that engines used to be inclined that way i don't know if they're allowed so much freedom that they just do a different things yeah. now but i think that extreme violence is generally the the um the most attractive thing to our uh yeah i mean when you say extreme violence reflexes. Basically, basically the most forcing move so um, yes. yeah that is the most forcing move um mm. it's funny when i was looking at this again i was i was I was trying to be honest with myself and thinking, would I actually play this? <laughs> you know, could I see this? Well, maybe. But I think... I think in once you get to this position, I don't think this is very easy to spot, actually. And, and there's kind of a, a psychological reason for this. 
I think. So let's let's throw this out there. So how should White play from here? I should say this is winning, which, well, once you know there's something there, of course, that, that's a massive clue. Uh, and we never get someone tapping us on our shoulder during the game saying, OK, there is a checkmate here. Kevin says, we like a knockout rather than winning a boxing match on points. Um, yeah, I, th I think if we can if we can force a win, I think that's it. Then we know that it, you know, it's decisive, basically. Romildo the thing Alves is, that this line is also fun. extremely safe. Ah, oh, in I the think. sense that it's a draw. If you want, to, if you, it, you it, there are lots of easy draws. Yeah, if you. Uh... That's true. Yeah, we've got Bishop A five has been suggested. Um, cool. I'm, I'm guessing Queen B five is probably a good idea um, because. I want to exchange queens, and there could be um, a very nice way to exchange queens with a queen g5 check, for example. Yeah, and th 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 that's probably the most important thing to notice about the position once you start analyzing it, is how unbelievably important it is to prevent this queen from entering the defense. Right. I mean, it's, it's a key factor in almost every calculation. Mm. But you have to spot it once yeah but, but but this is interesting that as you say along the way you kind of pick up clues about the position mm. and that feeds yeah, into exactly. your your basic instinct but i think it's yeah. really interesting you know no one has come up with the idea yet uh, i don't think this i mean is basically simple. i think yeah you you you, you find a lot you, you you are naturally attracted to one line mm. you charge down that line you pick up information as you go and if it doesn't lead to a clear enough or a satisfactory enough conclusion you then go back armed with the information you've picked up along the way and now you're in a much better place to consider if there are candidate moves that are relevant to the you know information or obstacles that you've picked up along the way right so i don't think in tactical positions it's at all it's it's, it is, it's either natural or effective to try and candidate first yeah um, and there are a lot of examples of how I yeah how this applies in practice and with students. Yeah, uh, well, we we might move on to another example in, in a second, but I I, um, I think it's very interesting. No one has spotted this, and I'll I'll show the the main line here. So Queen G four check, King F seven, and the win here is Queen C four check. And the reason that I found this difficult to spot is I think lateral queen moves are quite tricky to spot in my experience. Um, mm -hmm. But this is the win, basically. Um, I mean, in this position here, this is a classic kind of um, a, a branch or a hedge or <laughs> shrubbery, as you put it. You know, yeah, one, I, I mean, one I can has the number how... crunch here. <laughs> Here you yeah. have to know. I don't recall crunch. how I don't recall how Kotov actually drew this one. Yeah. So I mean let's um, just in, let's it, by by drawing, I mean, you know, like in yeah. terms of trees and shrubbery or diagrams. But... And and this is a good one because here, yeah, this brings the rook into the game. This is absolutely crucial, and it does it with tempo. So after this, we've got Queen C seven and then check. Of course, somebody who's calculating, but maybe less of a calculator, might might be guided by trying to just check the queen into the most central position, for example. Yeah, maybe. I think this, I mean, I find this one very difficult. Yeah, so as you mentioned, you know, Belyavsky played through, and you mentioned this in the book, he used to play through five games in his head every day mm. as a kind of mental training. Um, and yeah, this is a way of keeping fit. Yeah, I think this is an excellent idea. I was talking, so somebody mentioned this on Twitter the other day. David Smirden in, in Australia mentioned this mm -hmm. on Twitter mm -hmm. or X or whatever we call it. And uh, he said, oh, I'm about to go to the dentist. And he said, My usual routine when I'm at the dentist is to visualize a study position uh, beforehand. And then when I'm, you know, leaning back. <laughs> 
<laughs> at the dentist, you know, I need to distract myself. So he basically tries to solve a study while the dentist is <laughs> doing something unpleasant just to take his mind away from it. And it's really funny because I do exactly the same thing when I'm at the dentist. I've done this always. I've always done this at the dentist. Uh, I, I usually uh, you pick on some um, opening that you know I've been having struggle struggling with, and you know play through the opening and and kind of discuss ideas in my head while while the drill <laughs> goes to work on my teeth. <laughs> it's great distraction. It really is. It just takes you takes you to another place basically. So visualization is really really important and a skill that you know dis you discuss and you have lots of exercises and indeed everyone has leapt on this idea and yeah, the, mentioned the, queen a4 check book, yeah and i was going to say in terms of visualization the two things besides belyovsky the other thing and i suppose it's the thing that sets the book apart really because it's it has one clear contribution to uh, sort of training theory, and that's the stepping stone. Ah, okay. So explain about the stepping stone. So this is a yeah. Technique. The stepping stone is basically, yeah. It basically the argument is if you can get uh, increase your visualizations visualization skill to the point that you can bring one position into focus, into clear focus when needed, you are then capable of analyzing to infinite depth by exercising the skill at the point where the position becomes fuzzy in your mind that's basic that's it in a nutshell okay so and you provide so basically various you practice, examples <laughs> yeah mm. um just to and this just occurred to me at a very yeah yeah okay. sensible point i noticed i was getting fuzzy um lots of people yeah. have mm -hmm. mentioned in this position that after d take c3 queen a4 check is the classic trick to win the yeah. night. Um, I like to use this this position as the conclusion of a set of simpler Queen A4 or A5 check tactics. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, uh, the question is, how, how should Black play here? What's the best that Black can do? This is mean. It's a mean one, really. We've suckered them into this. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, that's that's why it's my favorite because it's just an it's just it's an extremely unusual tactic, actually. It is, yeah. In terms of a a, a trick, yeah. yeah. This is a question for you, folks. Black to play. What should you do? Let's flip it round. I never know whether it makes it easier or more difficult when I flip the board. But anyway, let's let's find out. Black to play. I suspect that flipping the board's another thing from the book, isn't it? I recommend flipping the board a lot. Oh, do you? I miss that. Yeah, yeah. Mostly because I, it, it occurred to me how powerful it is from a conversation with Jules Hodgson. Yeah, it's quite entertaining. Jules was he was I think he was preparing to play. He was quite against Yasha Murray, and he really wanted to play the Knight of Sicilian. So he was trying to figure out if he could play c3 and move one with white, if Yasha would play e, e5, and then he could go c4 and, and then play the knight of Sicilia with, with white, even though he was with, you know, the normal black knight of Sicilian, mm. even though he was white. And at that point, we were, <laughs> so we were, we were uh, entertaining Jules's train of thought. And we just looked at the position after c3, e5, c4, knight f6. And we thought nobody in their right mind would play d3 in that position as white. You would play knight c3. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And it's interesting how powerful that feeling is just because of the color of the pieces. <laughs> oh, dear. We've got some, we've got some fairly... Uh... Flippant comment, comments here. Do got... GMs flip the board in their mind while playing? That's mm. a really good question. Yeah, I think I do. I do. That's coming up. That do you? Yeah, I think I I flip cool. it. Yeah. That's really interesting because I was in the next edition, the next uh, in the prequel. I'm going to I'm going to suggest this as a conscious technique for advanced visualizers. No, I flip the board. Yeah, definitely. 
because it's it's amazing how how helpful that is yeah if you can do it uh mahendran tm has come up with the right move in fact queen a4 check is problematic after knight d7 because queen takes allows knight c5 and a thumping great check on d3 and the game careers on somehow um yeah it's interesting so if we just come back to this position, in fact, queen a4 check probably isn't the best move. Um, maybe no, b, b takes c3, I b guess. takes c3 is, is, is really horrible for, for black. Yeah, that knight's in, in big trouble, big, big trouble. Yeah, 